really appreciate being uh, invited to come and uh, speak to you all today. I think this is the first time uh, LIC's been here. Um, well, I certainly haven't been here before, so uh, um, all good. Um, I will talk a little bit about who um, LIC is, but we're basically here um, as uh, a farmer-owned uh, dairy cooperative um, representing our dairy farmers. Obviously, we don't cover the whole rural spectrum, but dairy farming is still a, a pretty critical backbone um, to, uh, to, the, to the country. And uh, just for the record, um, I think uh, rural broadband connectivity is a really good idea. And uh, we're kind of betting the company on it. So uh, I thought uh, what I would do today, I, I, I can't really talk about, uh, you know, thank you, Mike. I think it was a great presentation, really enjoyed it. Um, I can't talk too much about actually how we make it happen, um, but I can talk to you a little bit about what LIC is doing and the, the plans that we have in place and why this is, um, you know, kind of so critical um, for us. So, uh, and I'll try and stay to time. So quick video um, to start with. This is our latest service that uh, we released um, uh, just coming up about a year ago. Um, it's across most of the country now. I'll let you have a quick look at this. It's a New Zealand first. A very high-tech approach to one of the most critical farm functions. So space, which is satellite pastures and covers evaluation, is designed to measure pasture covers from space. So it's taking satellite images and using an algorithm to tell a farmer how much pasture they have on their farm. For dairy farmers, pasture assessment is vital, but until now, time consuming. Every Tuesday we walk the whole farm with a rising plate meter. I think it's one of the most important things we do. The main aim is time. So instead of a farmer having to walk around the farm and measure pasture, um, they'll get an image and that means they'll know where to send their cows for feed and they won't have to walk around and do that measurement. It's a giant leap forward for pasture management and has taken some time to develop for New Zealand's cloudy conditions. This is the first time we've actually had the cadence from the satellites to have a satellite going over at least once each day. Initial users are excited about space, which delivers data from the satellite images straight to farm computers or tablets. Oh, I think, it, yeah, no, it'll be great. It, um, yeah, it'll take a lot of variables away and... Um, being able to have that access, you know, sometimes people get busy on farms and don't get the time. Well, the real opportunity is to know where the pasture supply is going up or down and to respond accordingly today rather than two weeks' time. And farmers are excited about some of the potential gains in production from better pasture management. We run this farm on the basis of capturing data to make better decisions, and this is more data coming in a really straightforward manner to us that we can use and validate against what the cows are telling us. And I would offer the probability that it'll be used beyond dairy farms before very long. Yeah, it's a really, a really exciting opportunity for us and I think it'll be a good value for New Zealand dairy farms. Uh, so we're really excited about that and we worked really hard to try and get a good acronym that uh, kind of resonated well. It took, took quite a while to uh, get, uh, you know, pasture and covers evaluation uh, in there. So, uh, no, it was uh, good work by our marketing department. Anyway, look, it's going extremely well. Um, and as Wayne said in the video, the key thing really for us is the cadence. So we've got uh, over 200 satellite um passes over rural New Zealand now and that gives us the opportunity to peek between the clouds which was always the hardest best um, and providing we get images uh, within uh, you know at least once a week um, then uh, then we're, we're, we're doing uh, pretty well. Rural Canterbury certainly does the best. Um, uh, Taranaki and, uh, and Waikato and Northland um, seem to struggle a little bit with cloud cover but uh, we're still working through that so that's one of the main things that we're doing. Um, so just a little bit about who LIC is. So we are a, a farmer-owned cooperative. Um, we do cover a, a lot of the dairy farmers with over 10,000 farmer shareholders um, in the company. We operate globally, um, so we have offices um, overseas in, in the UK, uh, Ireland, uh, South America, Australia, the US, to name a few. Um, we've got uh, 780 permanent staff um, up in Newstead in Hamilton um, and I'm afraid I uh, was there this morning. I've only flown down so uh, uh, this morning so I missed the uh, presentations this morning so uh, I'm sure they were really good and uh, look forward to getting the pack afterwards. Um, anyway and um, 
we do a uh, we do a number of uh, we do a number of things. We we kind of primarily split the company into two. So most people know us for our genetics, uh, and you know the key thing we drive is is herd improvement, um, and we do that through herd testing. We have a, um, a software package that we sell to farmers called Minder. Uh, it's sort of described as the birth, deaths, deaths and marriages of cows, really. Um, and uh, most people are surprised to hear that we have over a billion uh, records in our system. So we are a big data company uh, and we have an awful lot of information. Um, and in the agritech space, we also uh, have automation products um, as well. So... Um, we're we're, uh, we're 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 pretty busy there, and we do spend a fair amount of money on innovation, um, and I suppose that's really the key. Um, and historically, people have said, "Well, that's innovation with scientists doing things in test tubes with genetics." Uh, you know, that's people looking at you know new gates and devices and satellites and things. Uh, the key piece I'm really driving um, in the time that I've been at LIC is is innovation around the data. Um, and how we move that information and how we, we share it. Uh, I uh, didn't uh, grow up in the agri business. I uh, come from uh, other industries, primarily uh, finance industries. And I am frankly gobsmacked at uh, how little data is shared across the rural networks. Um, and uh, we're certainly on a mission to change that because the reality is there's a lot of farmer-owned cooperatives um, and the data belongs to them um, and we should be working together um, to, to do that. So we're, we're certainly pushing for that. And this is really the flywheel um, that I'm driving um, within um, LIC in terms of this data. The more information that we can get, the better analytics we can provide, the better the analytics, the better the decisions that we can make on farm, the more productive people are, the more productive they are, the more data they generate. And so the flywheel goes round and round and round. And this is really key. Um, I was at the AWS summit in Sydney uh, last month. Uh, they had Formula One uh, up on the stage talking a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Formula One now generate over a billion data points per lap of a Formula One car going around a track. Uh, I'm on a mission to get a farm to be generating a billion data points a day because the more information we have, the better the analytics we can run across that, the better the AI, the better the machine learning, the better insights we can give to our farmers. And that's really key for us. Um, so I put this up. This is where I started. Um, I'm a POM, so normally I, people put up a ZX81, um, but for the techies in the room, you might, uh, you might remember these things. Um, I, uh, I was a bit of a geek at 12. I joined the uh, local computer club, um, and then I got to see War Games with Matthew Broderick in it. And uh, uh, after that, I made my dad go out and get me one of these, uh, which was uh, an acoustic phone coupler. Uh, I don't actually have any photos of me, so that's one off Wikipedia. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about, you know, connectivity. So, um, you know, I started my connectivity journey a long, long time ago, um, you know, with these sorts of things and uh, modems, dial-ups. I'm sure some of you will remember that lovely sound that you used to get when you plugged the telephone in. Um, the reality is coming into the ag industry. I was on farm last year and I heard somebody still using the telephone dial-up to to try and drive their farm forwards. And uh, I don't know if you personally have used dial-up recently, um, but uh, a page that takes around about four seconds to load on broadband takes about three and a half minutes on dial-up. That is the sort of difference in speed that we are talking about. So if you have a 10 second load page on broadband, you're talking seven to eight minutes. You think sitting in front of your computer for 10 seconds is slow. You wanna try sitting in time to go and make several cups of coffee or tea. Um, so we certainly need to be pushing because really, um, and this I'm afraid was the best stock photo I could find on the internet to put up, um, but you know, really uh, we are looking to be providing our farmers with a wealth of information and to do that, we absolutely need the connectivity. Um, I put this up, I'm sure people this morning have put much better graphics up about where we are as a country. Um, I put this up because I spent a whole evening challenging myself to go and find out how New Zealand was doing. And the best I could find was some data from 2017, which I think is a little shocking. So I haven't put this up for you to necessarily read because 
because this data is now stale. It's completely out of date. The internet and, and, and uh, the, uh, the uh, technology world moves too quick. And looking at information that's two years old, um, to be blunt, is a waste of time. Um, but I was pretty disappointed that, uh, you know, I, I really struggled to find, and this was literally the best I could find. So I know I'm sure there's been a lot of people talking this morning about where we are as a state of the nation, but certainly as someone uh, sitting in a, in, a, in a corporate company that's betting the company on this stuff, this is the best I can find. So I will push back to uh, the telco providers and say, you need to be providing us with better information so that we can make better decisions. Um, and uh, yeah, we're very keen to, uh, to support this. Um, so uh, moving forwards. So this is the picture we use um, internally um, at LIC. And I thought I would show you just a few internal pieces. You probably can't read that from the back of the room. Um, but basically, I suppose the key um, is, and I don't know if the laser pointer will work on this. Whoops, no, it'll, uh, I'll have to go back. Um, I'm just going to walk over here. That's where we see the farmer sitting behind a desk. So we see the cows in the pasture with connected collars. Um, we see drones and agribots and other pieces of automated technology um, moving around the farm. Um, the other key piece that we've put in um, is on the right hand side, which is the marketplace and the predictive um, uh, analytics, which we now see um, will be of key interest, not just to rural uh, people, but also to uh, both corporates and also government. Um, you know, we know that as a rural um, uh, business, we're up against challenges with environmental concerns, um, etc. You know, we as an ag um, industry, we need to um, improve things. And so um, I'm a huge believer that the data will allow us to um, certainly drive improvements. And so how can we use that data? How can we get that information, which we know is accurate, uh, that we can then pass to the relevant um, people to, uh, you know, drive those sorts of things. Because at the moment, you know, we have farmers filling things in, uh, you know, with a pencil on a bit of paper at the end of the year. Um, and I'm sure they all uh, try and do a good job. And I'm sure they're all trying to make sure they're filling those forms in as honestly as they possibly can. But the reality is we have the accurate data sitting in computer systems somewhere else. And we need to be bringing that information together and we need the connectivity to do that so that we can push that information out and that's absolutely what we are um, pushing towards and one of the big things that LIC has been on a mission for the last three years is to move off our legacy platforms um, into cloud so we've moved over 750 million of the billion records uh, up into AWS now um, and so that information is sat there we have a massive data lake um, and, uh, you know, we're busy trying to do, uh, you know, all this AI and machine learning uh, and modern analytics across um, this. And so with all this information sat in the cloud, once again, to get it, um, you need the connectivity, right? We just can't do it um, without, um, uh, so to move forwards. And really, you know, these are the things that we see uh, driving the technology industry. Um, Big data, we've always been a big data company, but as I say, more and more information's being pulled together. Internet of Things, um, I'm sure you're all well aware. The sharing economy I put up there because as I say, I don't think we're very good at sharing information particularly, and we need to get a lot, lot better at that. Um, and, and obviously the cloud, which uh, um, I, was, I was lucky enough to, uh, to go to Stanford last year and uh, one of the professors uh, said to me, uh, he, he asked a question and no one in the class put their hand up and he said, look, if you're asked a question, uh, there's only two, and you don't know the answer, there's only two answers. If it's a kind of businessy sounding question, then the answer is China. If it's a technology sounding question, then the answer is the cloud. So, uh, so there you go. So Stanford professor says the answer is the cloud. So. Uh, there we go. So um, this is um, our vision for our uh, Minder software. Um, so this is the birth, deaths and marriages of uh, cows. We have around about a 94% market share with this product with dairy farmers in New Zealand. Uh, and we're also looking to uh, take it uh, overseas. Um, so historically, most IT systems are about information in and information out. Some of you who have done IT degrees will have learnt about I.O. Um, historically, we've had farmers gathering information with little yellow booklets and pencils out in the field, uh, writing it all up. Uh, then we gave them a computer system and they could go 
to uh, the house in the evening and they could sit in the evening and sort of punch it all into the system. And then we would take that data, do some work on it, and we would produce you a 50-page report, which you could print off your nice dot matrix printer uh, at home and then get a ruler out and start sort of drawing lines through various things. Um, we're certainly trying to move away from that now. Um, and in fact, we're trying to make the IO as predictive as we can. So for example, a farmer will go out and record a carving or, or a number of carvings um, overnight. Um, I'm saying to my team, I reckon we can predict that. Uh, and the team have done some work and they said, yeah, we reckon we can predict that with around about 93% accuracy. We know when the calves are coming out of the cow. So I said, well, it's great. We now have a mobile app that allows the farmer to wander the field to type it in so they don't have to write it on with a pencil in a book anymore. But wouldn't it be great if the app said, here are the 93 calves that you should expect to find in the field this morning. Tell us about the four that you got wrong or that LIC got wrong. Isn't that much, much more efficient? And so, you know, we're, we're looking to replace herd testing with inline milk meters. So we're getting those through ICAR approval at the moment. And so we think that all the information that comes into our systems will be highly automated in the future. And once again, connectivity responsible for that. And then we think that the outputs will not be, we're not gonna give people reports anymore. What's the point of that? We can pretty much give you some good insights, right, without needing to give you a 50-page report that you can draw on. Um, we can send a, an alert to your phone that says, hey, we've noticed this in your information. You might want to talk to your farm staff about this tomorrow morning because you might want to be making some decisions tomorrow afternoon about X, Y, and Z. And so we're going to see a lot of data moving forwards and backwards, but we're going to see the interaction with the farmer and the interaction with the human being being much, much smaller because farmers have got a lot of other things and a lot of other demands on their time. Um, I just put this up. This is basically our digital architecture that we now have um, in place. Um, and so we have a whole bunch of reusable services. So we've moved away from big monolithic systems now. Um, and you can see I've highlighted a service called Animal Timeline. Once again, you won't see that at the back, but it'll be in the pack. Um, and we're providing this information. And the reason I put that up is we've just launched our, our digital shop. For farmers. It's a bit like Amazon.com or TradeMe, allows you to go and buy products and services. But what's really cool about our new shop is it knows everything about your farm. Um, and so unlike TradeMe, where the amount of data that you have about that product that you're purchasing, uh, which is normally quite small, uh, we know an awful lot. So for example, if you're going to go and buy ear tags for your animals, our system will tell you all the numbers that are available for you to purchase, right? You don't need to sit down and write them in anymore because we have that depth of understanding about your farm. And we have that depth of understanding because all our products and services now go across a common suite um, of services that hold that information. All right, so just wrapping up, um, key for us, uh, we want to know our customers better. We want to give people transparency, choice, make life easier. I mean, these all sound great. I'm sure you can all read them um, with those sorts of things. The next horizon for us, um, you know, we firmly believe farming is built on relationships, so we're not going to replace our people with computers, um, but we really think that uh, having the computers support those relationships and provide that information is critical. Um, the key is to remove friction. The key is to make uh, the interactions that farmers have um, as easy and effortless as possible. Uh, and we also want to make our staff effective and efficient as well because uh, we provide IT systems to them too. Um, and so this is really our goal, creating technology that enables the future of livestock farming um, and our ambition using technology innovation to enable our farmers to continue to lead the global pastoral dairy system uh, of which New Zealand is doing so well and we are so proud of and we are really immensely proud of our, uh, of our farmers. Uh, they do a great job. So with that, I'll say thank you. I don't know if there's time for questions or yeah, certainly is did Paul. I get round through um, that big enough? And I liked your emoticons too. It's great. <laughs> um, so look, Paul, maybe a question I can kick off and, and don't be shy on the Slido guys to use that is um, we're hearing a lot about big data and sorry, help, help my small little brain here. But, you know, to me, it sounds like an oxymoron. <laughs> Sounds like an oxymoron, big data. Um, oh, look, I think we can gather a lot more information than we do. 
Um, at the moment, um, you know, when I go out on farm uh, and I talk to farmers, most of the information is sitting in their heads, really. Um, and I even think about our agri managers at LIC. And you know, you've you've been working with someone for 20 years. They know all about you. They know your family, where you know the kids go to school. You know how the local rugby team's going. And then I go back to the IT systems, and uh, we don't even know if you have a rotary shed versus a herringbone shed. Um, every time we do a herd test, we ask you. Uh, we've only been herd testing you for 25 years, but for some reason we we never seem to capture that information. So this is what I mean about. IT not replacing the relationship because that's really key but wouldn't it be great if we had all that information in our systems because it just makes it, it's that frictionless piece that just makes life uh, a lot easier and so when I say big data what I really mean is how do we capture um, all that information and keep it current because there's nothing worse than expired information either nothing worse us turning up talking about your herringbone shed when you've just invented invested in a new rotary right so we need to keep that up to date as well thank you paul and then the other thing i'm sort of a little curious around is um one of our speakers earlier was talking around how you know farmers are, uh, are doers and often you know sitting behind a desk a farmer doesn't actually go to run their own farm he or, or he or him um, to sit behind a desk with a computer and how are you sort of rewarding that behavior um, because you know and ultimately they want to be outside farming is my understanding as well, opposed to um, <laughs> you know the, the, the time the return on investment behind the desk because if they want a desk job they just go go into town oh yeah look I, I, I suppose uh, I, a bit glibly um, we, we, we kind of um, put that up so look I think farmers will always be outdoors people don't don't get me wrong and it's not my place to tell farmers what to do uh, what we want to do is give them choice though um, and I will push back a little bit because the space thing I put up earlier um, every farmer I know much prefers sitting at their desk playing with the pasture measurement system we have than uh, wandering around with a plate meter um, and um, yeah in fact uh, you know I talk to guys who've, 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 who've moved from plate meters to the uh, to the to the, the pool behind and they're saying that's because I'm sick to death of walking around um, doing this sort of stuff. So for me, it's it's not about saying you need to be indoors. You can be outdoors with the data, but it's about you not having to now do lots of boring, monotonous style work um, and the systems do that for you. Okay, uh, we've got a good question here. Uh, farmers were very reluctant to embrace Nate. How can they be made more accepting about technology? <laughs> so we're talking about the adoption of technology. Um, oh, look, I think uh, I think there's a bit of I think there is a bit of carrot and and, and stick going on uh, and, and required. I mean, uh, farmers are like every other population. You, know, you get a nice distribution curve. Um, so I know farmers who are all over Nate and very proud that they have all their information up to date and and put a lot of energy into it. And and then I know farmers who uh, yeah, see it as a, a kind of necessary evil, and and, and really, um, unless they uh, are uh, you know a little bit more penalised, and that becomes a bit real, um, you know, to drive those behaviours to make them do what needs to be done to you know help eradicate M. bovis, which we're also firmly behind, um, you know, then it's then it's required. So I, I think in some respects there there is that uh, there is that uh, if you want to do a you know if you want a single outcome, you, you kind of have to incent and reward those people who do it well. Um, and you also have to find a means to uh, uh, maybe uh, I don't know if incense the right word, but also push a little harder for those who uh, yeah who need to also uh, do something for the common good as well. I think you made a good point there around that balance between asking the the, the cockies to um, basically record and then what are they getting as a reward? Yeah. It's yeah, not, not no, supposed absolutely. to rhyme, but it sounds kind of good. Yeah. Um, so, Paul, uh, one more last question here. What connectivity do you have to your client base and shareholders? Uh, in terms of, so what connectivity uh, think, do we thinking have? connectivity in terms of do you talk to them directly or? you know through through apps or, or systems yeah i or mean so, so 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 most of our most of our farmers are online as i say we've got 94 percent market share with our minder product but we still have people who use it on dial up so we support that and so to use that product you basically press the synchronize button uh, and then you leave it to sort of run for three or four hours to move the ones and zeros across the wire nice and slowly um and you know we want to you know effectively um drive our technology forwards and so you know we can't hang around with broadband anymore we're on a real mission to try and move off that because we're, we're not going to go forward so we do have connectivity but what we don't have is is decent high-speed connectivity 
Um, and uh, you know, I'm 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 here to say yes. We think it's a great idea, <laughs> and uh, you know, we're 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 betting we're betting LIC and and our farmers' livelihood on getting this problem sorted. So I look to these people in the room to uh, help that make that a reality for us.